Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is a continuation of the topic three economic issue of inflation. Inflation is a sustained increase in the general prices of an economy. Previously, we learned how to measure inflation as well as the types and causes of inflation. Check out the links in the description below to learn more about that. Today, I'll provide an overview of some of the effects of inflation. First on the list of effects to talk about is wage rates. To effectively unpack the impact of inflation on wage rates, we must recall the difference between nominal income and real income. Like I explained in my first video about inflation, nominal income is income measured in raw dollar values or current prices. The problem with this measurement is that it does not take into account any changes in price, and therefore it's not a completely accurate representation of actual buying power. For example, I could tell you that I doubled my income this year compared to last year. That sounds impressive, right? But if I tell you that the prices in the economy also doubled, you realize that I'm not any more well off than before. That's why we also have a measurement called real income, which takes into account the rate of inflation. So what is the impact of inflation on income? It would increase nominal income as wages and profits increase with prices. However, if these wage increases are slower than inflation, real income is actually decreasing, eroding the purchasing power of income. Next, let's explore the impact of inflation on savings. Inflation erodes the purchasing power of savings. I'll demonstrate with an example. Imagine if you had $1,000 last year and cheeseburgers were only $1 each. You could have bought 1,000 cheeseburgers. And then imagine, instead of spending it, you put that $1,000 in the bank. And throughout the year, the economy experiences inflation and the price of cheeseburgers doubled to $2. Now the $1,000 that you put away in savings could buy less cheeseburgers. That's how inflation erodes the value of your savings. Following this train of thought, inflation can also impact the value of debt. Now picture this example. Imagine if you had borrowed $1,000 from me last year to buy 1,000 cheeseburgers and you have to pay me back now. The $1,000 you pay me back will be able to buy less cheeseburgers as it has lost purchasing power due to inflation. This example shows that with inflation, the winner is the borrower who spends the money before inflation and the loser is the lender who receives the payment after prices have risen because they can buy less for that repayment. And with this in mind, interest rates often increase with inflation. Savers and lenders need higher interest rates to compensate for the loss of purchasing power as they delay their spending. On top of that, the RBA often increases cash rates and interest rates to slow down demand pool inflation. There are a few ways that investments are impacted by inflation. One way is that with interest rates increasing, the cost of borrowing to invest will increase. This will see a fall in investment. But even without interest rates changing, Inflation could signal uncertainty in the economy and cause a fall in investor confidence. Another way that inflation could impact investment is by causing a shift in the types of investment. Investors would withdraw from productive investments, such as expanding businesses, and instead put their funds into speculative inflating assets, such as existing property. This shift could mean lower productivity in the economy and further inflation of asset prices. Income distribution could be worsened by inflation as well. This is because low-skilled workers who already earn lower incomes lack the bargaining power to negotiate for higher wages in response to inflation. Whereas high-skilled and high-income earners have greater bargaining power and therefore see their wages increase with inflation. Furthermore, high-wealth households usually have their wealth in assets that increase in price with inflation. This all means that the income and wealth gaps will worsen with inflation. If Australia's inflation rate is higher than that of its neighbours, we would be losing international competitiveness. This means that we would lose export volumes as they're more expensive compared to foreign markets. Also, Australians will prefer to buy more import goods over expensive domestic Australian goods. This will worsen our trade balance in our current account. Furthermore, this means that there'll be more outflows than inflows in our net exports component of aggregate demand, leading to lower economic growth. As covered above, other components of aggregate demand such as investment could fall. Consumption may also be delayed. Governments are also likely to use contractionary fiscal policy along with monetary policy to curb inflationary booms. All of this leads to decreased aggregate demand and slower economic growth. If the inflation was caused by cost push factors, it could also represent decreased aggregate supply, constraining economic growth over the long term. And obviously with these constraints on growth, unemployment rates are impacted. But I'll expand on this in my next video. My next video is going to be on the relationship between unemployment and inflation. It's a pretty complex topic and I can't wait to make it easy for you. Make sure you don't miss it by subscribing to the channel as well as following us on Facebook. 
If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment. Share the video too. I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.